Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards, a video series where we take a strategic, in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today we're looking at Laboratory, a 5 cost action card from the base game and it simply says plus 2 cards, plus 1 action. So a very very simple card instructions wise. Um, so Laboratory is what we call non-terminal draw. So you play it, you get cards, you get your action back. Should be fairly simple from the instructions because that's literally all it says. Um, every time you play a laboratory your hand size goes up by one. So you the laboratory goes out of your hand into the play area, it replaces itself <clears throat> and then it draws an extra card on top of that. Um, Laboratory is a very reliable card, so a lot of the time when you are thinking of draw, um, a lot of draw tends to have some sort of ordering issues uh, because they sometimes rely on other cards. So like Smithy, for example, relies on you drawing it alongside villages in order to keep your turn going. Well, Laboratory draws cards and doesn't really care about any other card in your hand, right? You just play the lab, you just get the draw. So... This helps to remove a lot of the reliability issues that a lot of draw tends to get. So it, it's it's very good in that regard. Um, laboratory is just a very generically strong card. Um, I say generically because because it just sort of doesn't really care about any other card that you have. Um, this means that it fits into almost every type of deck that you can you can think of. Um, I'm sure you can come up with an example of a deck that doesn't really want labs, but overall, you know, like most decks will be happy to just have a couple of labs thrown into them. Um, laboratory is is not flashy, right? It, it's so simple, you play it, that I think sometimes you can sort of underestimate what it's actually doing for your deck, right? You just sort of play it, you draw two cards, you think, oh, you know, that's it, that was lab. But actually, like what it does for you overall is pretty good. I think Laboratory is overall a very strong card. Um, but it, it's not the sort of the monster that defines games that makes you sit up and go, whoa, look at this card, right? Um, so two Laboratories is giving you the same amount of draw <clears throat> as a Village and Smithy pair. So if you consider Village gives you plus one card and Smithy gives you plus three, that's a total of plus four after playing two cards. Well, laboratory's the same, um, play two cards and you've got plus four overall from it. Um, and in fact, in both cases, you end up with the same number of actions that you started with. So when you want to draw with laboratory, you're sort of spending the same number of buys and gains as you would on a typical terminal draw type of strategy. Um, the only difference is, is that the laboratories all cost five, whereas when you look at cards like Village Smithy, you know, they cost a lot less in pure monetary terms. Um, now, laboratory, just again, reiterating what I said, um, you don't care what order you draw those cards in, in order to draw. Um, and furthermore, um, on top of that, the village that you play first before Smithy is only giving you plus one card, and then the Smithy is giving you plus three, whereas the lab each one is giving you plus two. That means you sort of get a little bit further into your deck. If you need to hunt for the other card, um, Laboratory is just a little bit better in that regard. So to just show these pictorially, um, in this first example here at the top, um, we have a hand of five cards, we've got just one action, and we've got a smithy in it, but we haven't drawn our village. So um, this is a dud hand. If we play the smithy, uh, we aren't going to be able to play our artisan, we aren't going to be able to draw our artisan in this case. Um, and so that's that's a bit unfortunate, you know. We really wanted to play the artisan this turn, and we can't, because the cards came in the wrong order. Now, similarly here, this time we have got the village in our hand in instead. We've swapped the order of these cards, but the smithy is just one card further deep in our deck. And so we play the village, and we draw this copper, and unfortunately we never get to the smithy, so we are not able to draw the rest of our deck and play this artisan. But if we take these scenarios and we swap these villages and smithies for laboratories, um, even in this less favourable configuration where the next laboratory is two cards down, we still find it and we're able to draw our deck and play the artisan. So there's a lot more situations in terms of the order that the cards are arranged in your shuffle where laboratory 
um, is able to draw where other types of draw usually can't. And that's where laboratory gets its reliability from. Um, and it, it's, it's very good in that regard. Now, laboratory costs five. Um, five is a pretty competitive price point. Um, five, your deck cannot produce five very easily at the start. So normally if you want to hit five fairly early, you've got to actually start by adding cards in that will help you hit five. Now, laboratory, because it is a card that it's easy to just throw a couple of them into various decks and just like get as many of them as you can. Um, laboratory wants you to just keep hitting five over and over. And um, when you see laboratory, you sort of say to yourself that actually, you know, five is a very important price point. You want to keep hitting it again and again. And that is something that you need to think about when you consider what order you're going to be buying things. Of course, draw is economy. Um, laboratory essentially helps you hit five once you've got a couple of them uh, you it start the game you know they will be drawing those coppers for you and add more to your deck and draw other cards as well so um, laboratory sort of self synergizes in this way to um, help you um, afford laboratories again now if you want to go into more details as to why draw is so good um, I would recommend watching my video on smithy where i go into more details about draw being economy and all this and i'm not going to repeat myself for the people that have already watched that one um, sometimes laboratory is the only draw card that is available to you um, and the problem is is that that means that actually the total amount of draw that you can get is a lot more restricted so if we consider the village smithy combo for drawing your cards um, you have 10 villages and 10 smithies. So overall, there's like 40 cards worth of draw that is available. Um, but with laboratories, there's only one pile. That means there's only 10 labs and therefore there's only 20 available in total. Now, admittedly, you know, it does only take a one slot in the kingdom out of the 10 cards that come out, whereas village and smithy takes up two. But, you know, it it is it is harder. There's just less drawer available overall the total number of cards that you are putting towards your drawer is reduced when the bar is there and what that means is that um while it is will be reliable draw you're not actually going to necessarily be able to draw as much in total um, so you're going to need to possibly scale back any plans that you had and that's sort of going to put a limit on the total effect of what your deck is capable of doing so it, it doesn't mean that the draw is harder it just means that the final output is probably going to be slightly less so if you wanted to for example have seven golds in your deck and three markets and you're saying oh i'm gonna buy um three provinces every turn well drawing all of those golds and eventual provinces is going to be a lot harder if the only draw is laboratory right? Like it's just not necessarily good enough to draw through that many stop cards. So you probably won't be looking to do a, like a triple province and you'll scale it back to only double province. Um, that will affect how much time you want to spend drawing because it sort of hampers your ability to catch up with someone who didn't go to play the long game um, and is trying to just end the game really quickly. Um, yeah, and laboratory overall, though, I keep talking about the reliability. Um, it's really nice in that it is a form of reliability that also draws you more cards. So if you compare laboratory to like cellar, you know, cellar helps you find and connect up your villages and smithies, but it doesn't actually draw you cards in the sense, you know, all of the cards that you discard, cards that you might not either be able to play that turn or you're going to still have to draw them up at some point. But Laboratory gives you that reliability while also increasing your hand size, and that's just an incredible combination that really helps. Part of why it's so strong. Now, when is Lab bad? Well, we're going to talk about opportunity cost here. So Laboratory, um, sometimes you just want to buy Laboratory again and again and again, right? It's a really good card, and you just think, oh, I've hit five, I'm going to get another Laboratory. Um, at some point you do want to consider doing something else with your 
um, turns and your buys. So you've got to think to yourself, you know, what is your actual goal of drawing your deck? Like, what what are you trying to do every turn? Um, and it's probably not just draw everything with lab. You probably want to do something else as well, like play an artisan or a witch or get some buys. Um, and it, sometimes, even though you haven't quite finished drawing your deck yet, you still want to get a move on on starting to do those things. So it could be important that you take time out from picking up labs to instead grab like a market, for example. And once you have a market, maybe now you can hit seven money and two buys. And with that, you can actually, instead of buying a lab, you could buy a village and a smithy. And what you've done is that on that one turn, you've actually added extra draw to your deck than you would have if you had picked up just another laboratory. So if you just sit there and buy lab over and over, depending on the board, you can actually find yourself slipping behind an opponent who has just sort of started doing something with their deck sooner than you did, and that, that speeds them up over you. Um, also, because laboratory is five, it's fairly competitive as a price point. There's a lot of good cards that cost five, and a lot of the time, sometimes you're going to find something that's just better than a lab at that price. So like Sentry, for example, and Witch, these are two very powerful five-cost cards in the base game, and usually you want them first before you start buying laboratories. Um, but uh, it's, it's funny here, to just give you some idea of how good a laboratory is, I'm at this final slide where I'm trying to talk about when you don't want laboratory, and all I'm doing is talking in a generic sense about opportunity cost. Well, opportunity cost applies to every card, right? And if this is the worst that I can come up with for laboratory, then that should be giving you signs that laboratory is just really good, and it just has few downsides specific to the card itself, right? Um, so that's kind of all I really have to say about laboratory, right? It's good, you want it, and you want a lot of them. And usually when laboratory is on the board, you're getting some laboratories, right? Sometimes it's so important you want to win that split. Sometimes it's not so important. It's just giving you a bit of extra draw and reliability. But that's actually a really good effect. Um, so yeah, lab, it's good. Buy it. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the online client and we're going to generate some games involving laboratory. Um, like I say, laboratory is so good, I'm expecting that we will be buying laboratory in every single one of these games, right? But uh, we are going to take a look. So if we take a look here, um, our main draw in this game, um, well, we've got Festival for Actions, and we could do Festival Library. We've also got Council Room as well, and Witch. Um, but in this game, what a sad workshop. This is terrible for workshop. Um, we are going to be buying Sentry and Trash Down and then play Witch. Um, and after we do that, we're probably going to get a bunch of labs first. So the labs help us get ready. Um, once we've trashed a bit with Sentry, we're going to be expecting an influx of Curses from Witch. We want to try and get to the end of our deck to start trashing with Sentry while the Curses are in our discard. And Laboratory is really nice in that regard. We want to focus more on just continuing trashing before doing much else. So we'll get the labs first. Then we might start sifting into going for festivals. And maybe we go for library over cancer room. It sort of depends, I think, on how many laboratories we end up getting. Like, even though laboratory is draw and library doesn't like other types of draw, lab is still pretty good in festival library combinations, right? Like, even though it gives you a bit of draw, that helps you find that lab or for more festivals, right? It just gives you that reliability. Um, and that's probably going to be better than council room, I think. Just more of these. Um, council room, the extra draw is just so worrying. Um, and yeah, I think that's what we do. Maybe we get a bandit as well for some golds. Or maybe we don't. Maybe we go for vassals instead. Um, you can support vassals here quite well, I think. Uh, right, let's go for the next kingdom. Um, and what do we have here? So again, we want to trash down with Sentry. We start off our trashing with Moneylender, but then we get a Sentry. Um, 
Throne Room. Throne Room is a village and it's actually really good with laboratory. I mean, it's very good anyway, but it really likes playing it with laboratory. Uh, we Again, we have Festival Library. Library and Lab are our only real draw here. Um, we can just do Library and Markets. We trash down to very few um, stop cards. And maybe we have Festivals and Golds. And we might get a library or two, but I think lab is probably going to work out better as our primary draw. Um, maybe we don't even need the festivals, but we don't really need village here. Um, if you think about it, there are only two actual terminal um, action cards. So maybe we can just like go all in on markets. And I, I think lab, lab is fine because you've got poacher. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, we haven't really got great payload here is the problem. We've got all of these cantrips that give us money and we've got festival, but it's not that brilliant. Um, so what are we doing with our life? Well, I guess we're just going to be buying a couple of golds might be smarter, right? And we're just going to draw them with lab and we're only going to go so well with our draw. Um, that's probably what we do instead. Throne room's still good. You want a throne market. Maybe festival's not so good. Maybe we just don't play a terminal every turn once we've trashed all the coppers, right? Like the sentry helps us clear down faster. And we're just playing all of these um, cards that give us action and draw every turn. And we're just doing that a lot. That that might be what we end up doing here. Um, and we might be able to double province, but we're not going to focus too much. Um So what here? So again, festival is our, well, throne rooms a village as well. Um, sentry for trashing and money lender and remodel. Well, sentry's a lot better. So we're going to get sentry and then we're going to focus on buying labs. Once we've got some labs, this makes throne room really good. Um, so lab is sort of when you throne it, that's our village and we can throw in smithy and we can draw a lot very quickly. Once we've done that, we really want festival for buys and we're going to be using golds and um, we are going to be purchasing golds ourselves. Um, I could see maybe because of sentry, I think vassal is actually probably better. Um, you are going to use festivals and we're just going to rapidly buy a bunch of vassals. I think that might be the way we get our money instead. Um, we want multiple sentries and we're going to use them to um, help set up the vassals a bit better. Um, and we just draw a lot with lab and throne smithies. Um, remodel, how are we getting golds for that? Well, not so well, I think. Um, maybe we just don't get many golds. I think we use the buy from festival to just throw more vassals into our deck. Um, remodel may still be able to get us duchies in the late game, but I, I think we sort of aren't getting many golds. So we're just looking to get to like double province turns with festivals and vassals. Um, throning these cards gives us a lot of money as well. Um, and I think we're just playing a lot of these cards here um, and Sentry. Um, and that's sort of what our deck becomes in the end. Um, and I think that's really fast. Um, so Lab is really nice for the consistency there. Um, you don't really want to be relying just on Throne Room and Smithy on its own. Um, what have we got here? Well, we've got Artisan. Artisan loves laboratories and markets, and we have both of them in this game. Um, library and Lab are our only draw. We do have Militia, so Lab seem, oh, sorry, so Library seems like it might be quite nice, um, just in case our opponent is militiaing us. So I think while we are getting Labs, we are also looking to Festival Library, right? Festival again. It's always Festival, isn't it, in these kingdoms? that I'm generating. Um, so Festival Library is a thing. Trashing Down with Sentry is a thing. Um, using Artisan to gain more markets, festivals, labs, libraries. We, we want a mixture of all of these. And we're going to be playing a Militia on our opponent as well. I think that might be better because you're so well trashed, it's fine to keep militia in your opponent. There's not going to be many dud cards to discard. I think we can support some Vassals as well because we've got Library and we've got a whole load of Festivals. And I think Bandit is not really so good because we're going for Library. Um, I think this is like maybe the only card we don't get on this Kingdom. Um, and Laboratory is nice for some consistency. We do want some. The opportunity cost is really low because of Artisan. Um, 
but I guess we want to pile the festivals more importantly than the laboratory, like get the libraries. But we're actually looking to hit artisan ASAP and just pick up a load of this stuff. Um, so laboratory is okay for a little bit of extra reliability. It's not super important in this game, but I do like it. Um, and here comes the last one. So more incredible trashing, but this time we have chapel. Um, it looks like laboratory is our only draw here. Um, we do have markets that we can spam, but they are quite expensive for what they're doing. Um, this is a sad village. Um, what are our terminals? They are chapel, money lender, bureaucrat. And we've got throne room, which is a lot better. So I think what we are doing is we are trashing down very quickly. We are looking to get up to buying labs and markets and throne rooms. And we're just going to be trying to like throw in as many markets as possible and use that as our income. And I think because we have laboratory and throne room, we can just purchase gold. But um, how much time do we really want to spend building here? Because the best sort of economy gain is purchasing gold. So you know what? Maybe we could support just gaining silvers with bureaucrat to add to our income while we spend our buys on throne room and market. Um, that's sort of unusual because bureaucrat is very bad, but I think we could make use of it here just because the payload is very weak. Otherwise, like market's quite expensive for what we're getting. Um, that, I think that's actually what we're going to do. Um, uh, the drawer is still fairly weak, but I think we have just enough of it. Um, I guess whether we go for bureaucrat in the game for silvers is going to depend on how many labs we get. But because we want to be buying throne rooms and markets while we're doing that, um, I, it's, it's hard to know. But like we want as many labs as we can get on this board. Lab is very important. It is the determining factor basically in how big we can go with our engine. It's going to depend on how many labs we get. Um, and I think this game actually it's at risk of some sort of three pile rather than provinces possibly. Um, I can see at some point you're just going to be getting a load of buys with market and money and maybe you can like, with throne room market you can get a lot of buys and you can just slam that estate pile suddenly in one turn. Um, so maybe that's really what's happening. I, th I think lab is critical card on this board though because it's your only draw um, and you really, there's a lot of stuff you want to probably do with stock cards. It's dependent on your money. So, right, well, that was Laboratory. Um, I, I hope that was good for you. It's it's a good card overall. Uh, you see, we wanted it in every single one of those kingdoms. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.